Good afternoon and welcome to this new webinar from ERA, the European, the European Union Agency for Railways. I'm Cyril Martin, Communication Officer, and I will be your moderator today. Today we'll discuss a very important topic for the agency and the railway sector, the TSI's revision package. As you will see, this revision package is aligned with the European Green Deal and the Smart and Sustainable Mobility Strategy. Without further ado, I will now introduce our speakers. First, Jode Boskere, the head of the ERTMS and Telematics Unit at ERA, will present the legal background of the TSI's, this TSI's revision. Then, Olivier Piron, the head of Rolling Stock and Fixed Installations Unit at ERA, 
will explain in detail <clears throat> what is the European Commission request about TSIs. After him, Antoine de Fossé, Project Officer Running Stock and Fixed Installations Unit at ERA, will describe a concrete output of the discussions resulting in TSI's changes, precisely about running stock and fixed installations specifications. Two other concrete outputs related to ERTMS will be then described by Voter Malfet, Project Officer ERTMS and Telematics Units at ERA. Antoine and Voter are the project managers of this ambitious program of TSI revision. And last but not least, Josef Topolbauer, the executive director of the agency, will then talk about the next steps of this process and conclude this event. Thanks to all of you for being here today. Before I give the floor to you, I'd like to remind you that, as usual, you are most welcome to ask questions to our speakers using the chat function, which you will find at the top right hand corner of your screen. You can also tag questions from other attendees, which you judge valuable, by clicking the sub icon. We will do our best to reply to the greatest number of questions at the end of this webinar. A last word to say that this event, as usual, is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel and our website in the coming days. Without further ado, I now give the floor to Jode Boskere, the head of the ERTMS and Telematics Unit at ERA. Yo, please. Uh, good morning or good afternoon to everyone. So the first part, I will take you a little bit to the legal background for uh, TSIs. Um, TSI, it's about technical, it's about specifications and mostly about interoperability. The TSI are uh, the standards uh, that focus on the interoperability and most of them are the elements of the essential requirements that we need to harmonize to achieve that interoperability. Um, in total, we have 11 TSIs to handle. Uh, all of them are part of this uh, revision cycle that we are that is ongoing for the moment. If you look, we have on one hand TSIs that relate to structural subsystems, and on the other hand, we also find uh, TSIs more related to functional subsystems. Uh, if we look uh, besides those TSIs, uh, we also have uh, in some countries still notified, notified national technical rules. This is uh, specific rules for, for uh, uh, in some member states where we also have a program running to uh, drastically re uh, uh, lower the number of technical rules in the different countries. If we now look to the legal background, we start at the top level with the interoperability directive. In the interoperability directive, uh, we'll find an uh, article 4 that sets out the, uh, the general objectives for uh, the TSIs. It also gives us uh, a structure for each TSI. If you uh, have the opportunity to, to look at them, you will find in each TSI an introduction, definition and scope of the subsystem. You will find essential requirements, description of, uh, of the subsystem, uh, one of the most important description of interoperability constituents. Uh, as a sixth chapter, you will find the assessment uh, and of conformity of those interoperability constituents and also the EC verification of the subsystem, how this is handled. Last part in each TSI, it's the chapter seven. There you will find rules on implementation of uh, TSIs. And uh, last but not least, a lot of the TSIs have annexes. These annexes can be very specific technical documents, or uh, they can also be uh, appendixes to the transition scheme, or uh, also we have links to uh, European standards or other international standards that are applicable uh, in those TSIs. So this is on one hand the top level for, from the interoperability directive. Then uh, to be more specific, there is a delegated decision uh, of 2017. And in that delegated decision for each uh, of the 11 TSIs, there are more specific objectives that have been set out. There's also a, a, a general part for uh, the 
the TSIs, but more in detail, if you look at that decision, you will find a description uh, of the objectives of each of the TSIs. So this is the first framework. And as ERA, we uh, ha have got recently in 2020 a request to do a complete revision of uh, all TSIs. This was the first time that uh, all TSIs have been looked together to make uh, the recommendation as a whole package for uh, the, the, the TSI. So um, as ERA, we do not do that revision on our own. Um, to do a revision, we are structurized in working parties and topical working groups. As you see in the middle here, uh, working party is uh, normally linked to one specific TSI. Topical working groups, we, ha uh, we have uh, introduced them to make the link between uh, different uh, TSIs. For example, we have a topical working group on architecture for the onboard, and there we will find uh, expertise or experts from uh, CCS TSI, but also experts from Lock and Pass TSI. Um, to set up those working parties, we uh, look at the um, sector organizations. So we have, uh, there is an official list of representative bodies. So all those representative bodies are uh, invited to um, uh, take part of the working parties and or or the topic of working groups. Also, national safety authorities can take part of them. And if needed, we will look for uh, if there are specific uh, real de detailed expertise needed. Uh, we can also um, contact uh, the competent experts for that. So then we are running those working parties, uh, trying to come to a consensus on the different uh, items that uh, are on the table. And then uh, the outcome of, of the working party is uh, an error recommendation that will be presented uh, in, in two steps. We have a step where we have a, a consultation phase. And then the next step is that we as ERA uh, give over the recommendation to uh, the European Commission. Afterwards, you still have uh, the step to risk committee uh, and uh, at the end, uh, the uh, TSI itself that is published um, afterwards. But I mean, this process will be more explained in detail by Olivier where we are today and what are the next steps uh, in this process. Thank you. Many thanks, Yo. <clears throat> Let me now give the floor to Olivier Piron, the head of rolling stock and fixed installations unit at ERA. He will explain in detail what is the European Commission request about TSIs? Please, Olivier. Thank you, CIL, and good afternoon, everyone. Indeed, now that the legal framework has been described by you, I would like to detail a bit more on what triggered the Commission request for a TSI revision package. Um, as you certainly know, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, has established six political objectives that would set the work of the Commission for the future. The railway sector, with all the actors involved, the Commission, of course, the agency, but also joint undertakings, manufacturers, infrastructure managers, NSAs, railway undertakings, could play an important role for four of them. And I would like to mention them. It's uh, the EU objectives for a European Green Deal, an economy that works for people, a Europe fit for digital age, and a stronger Europe in the world. Just for the record, there are two other uh, political objectives uh, from the Commission that are promoting our European way of life and a new push for the European democracy, but these are domains in which the rail sector has few impact on. So if you want, let's come back to those four objectives that are uh, uh, underlined in, uh, in, uh, in red into the slides. Uh, the President van der Leyen tasked uh, the Commissioner Valéan, the Commissioner of the, uh, of the Transport, um, to ensure that, that we have a transport sector fit for a clean, digital and modern economy. The transport sector will have an important contribution to the climate, uh, climate and the digital transitions. And it is, by the way, highlighted by the European 
Green Deal and Shaping Europe's Digital Future Communications. Against this background, DG Move, the Commission really, uh, in charge of the transport, came with a comprehensive strategy on sustainable and smart mobility. This should guide the policy work under its current mandate and also in the future in order to pave the way to achieve a climate neutral Europe, deliver a safe and efficient rail system to all citizens, achieve a flexible, efficient and reliable EU rail system and strengthen the internal market and further harmonize rail specifications. One of these key milestones um, are one of the key milestones that are part of the, the program is definitely the 2022 TSI revision package that should establish the proper legal technical framework to support this comprehensive strategy on sustainable and smart mobility that is uh, decided by the Commission. And it aims at reducing the greenhouse effect gas emission uh, for the transport sector by 90% by 2050, and also to help the railways to be more efficient and digital ready. So, um, a bit about the, the Commission request. So, according to the process described earlier by Yo, the agency received from the Commission a request on the 24th of January 2020. And this request is, of course, linked with the uh, Commission politi political uh, objectives. It covers all the TSI and it has, it has to be delivered by June 2022. Uh, there are approximately 74 important topics that are embedded into this request and uh, that will be further described during this webinar. But I will would like to go uh, quickly through some of them. So the following list gives you an idea how large is the range and the scope of the topics. You can see also the direct link to the topics with the EU policies objective. We have, for instance, to include provisions for the development of intermodal transport in order to foster the shift from the road to rail and reduce the greenhouse effect. An example, the interoperability requirements for digital automatic couplers for wagons. It would support an easier operation of the wagons, but also offer digital application related to freight. Consider the inclusion of the derailment detection system, for instance, would also ensure increase the safety harmonize uh, harmonization between rolling stock and fissilation TSI is also one of the elements. We can also mention we can also mention uh, other topics uh, such as those related to uh, ERTMS and the game changer. So we will provide a mechanism for a swift error correction harmonize the operational rules for uh, ERTMS radio and the class B overlay, requirement for the use of ATO, definition of the FRMCS and a modular onboard architecture. Aligned with all those topics and new requests, the agency has also decided to improve its working method, methods. Uh, in the past, the revision of the TSI were most of the time specific to a subsystem. Each TSI were developed and maintained independently in order uh, of each other with proper life cycle. For instance, we had working groups established by the agency specific to only one TSI and composed by sector representative, representative specialized within that domain. Today, the TSI revision package should underpin many topics that impact several subsystems and several TSIs at once. So we have decided together with the sector to establish work groups by topic that should impact several TSIs at once and ensure a better consistency of their interfaces. As you see in the slide, you have, for instance, combined transport activities that 
uh, will trigger modification within the infrastructure TSI, the rolling stock and the operational TSI, for instance. Another example would be the mod uh, modular architecture that would uh, impact control command and rolling stock TSIs, etc. We have also other examples. What is also new is the use of a change control management tool uh, for the management of these TSIs. All the topics are now introduced into this IT tool as change requests, and the change requests are available and accessible to all the experts that are in charge of the ma management of the TSI, and all the contributions are stored into this tool for a better management, a better decision making, a better traceability, and a better transparency. This slide can be seen a bit complex, but uh, it represents all the working group that has been established by the agency in order to fulfill will our uh, TSI, uh, uh, TSI revision package. All those groups are shared by the agency and are composed by NSAs and sector representative bodies. Uh, the topical working group that are uh, represented by a box in below of the slide uh, are the groups that are really technical and that are in charge of finding solutions to close the change request and propose modification of the TSIs. At the top of the screen, you see circle that are representation of the working parties. And these working parties, it's the place where the output of the topical working group are presented and the change requests are validated. As you can see, there is a lot of arrows between the different uh, working groups and uh, all, it is because we have also many interfaces between the different working groups and the role of the agency through its ERA core team is to make sure that all this work is managed smoothly. So now a bit about the planning. As mentioned before, the TSI revision package work will be delivered to the Commission as an agency recommendation. Recommendation is, by the way, the most important legal act the agency could deliver. Uh, if you follow the planning, you uh, notice that the EC requests were delivered by the Commission to the agency on the 24th of January 2022. Then we had between 2020 and 2022, the work we have to perform through working groups with the sector. I would like to mention that during those two years, we work extensively with the sector. It should be noticed that despite this pandemic situation, all the meetings were organized. We kept the deadline. We were able even to invite more people than usual because we were not restricted by seats available in physical meetings. Just to give you an idea, 80 participants are invited to our working parties. This is not without counting all the experts invited in the topical working groups. We can also mention that we were this time less costly and greener because no travel needs uh, were requested. So to conclude, without any doubt, we can say that this TSI revision project was the most ambitious Issues, but also the less expensive and the greenest project on TSI we ever made in the agency. So if I want to continue, you see in orange the 18th of March, it is closed and it's the time of the external consultation that uh, we will, uh, will happen during three months. And in parallel to that, on the 31st of January, we will present to the Commission our first recommendation, first draft. Then on the 13th of June, we will give the Commission the final recommendation that will take into consideration the result of the consultation. And it is planned to have a presentation to risk the committee where the member states are represented on the 5th of July 2022. And the Commission will 
then transpose our recommendation into an implementing act and it will be presented for opinion to risk on the 22nd of November 2022. The idea would be that at the beginning of 2023, the publication in the official journal is done and the TSI package would enter into force. And I think this is the end of my uh, contribution to this uh, webinar. Uh, Cyril, please, if you want to take the floor. Many thanks, Olivier. I will now give the floor to Antoine de Fossé, Project Officer Rolling Stock and Fixed Installations Unit at ERA. He will describe concrete outputs of the discussions resulting in TSI changes and precisely about rolling stock and fixed installation specifications. Please, Antoine. Thank you, Cyril, and uh, good afternoon to participants. Uh, indeed, during the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I would like to give an overview of some of the most significant changes that will be proposed in the next TSI revision package for the rolling stock and fixed installation. And as this uh, revision package is entitled Digital Rail and Green Freight, I propose to start with, uh, with the rail and in particular with the wagons. We have three important change requests that were already mentioned by Olivier that are about uh, the wagons. And the first of all is the introduction of the digital automatic coupling in the wagon TSI and also in the lock and pass TSI. Here I put uh, an extract, uh, a picture extracted from the Shift to Rail website because we work in very close relationship with Shift to Rail to determine the characteristics, the specifications of the digital automatic coupling, and also to determine the migration strategy uh, in order to equip wagons progressively with this coupling. So there are many discussions ongoing between our working group and the European DAC delivery program of shift to rail. Uh, we had Monday and Tuesday this week uh, two full days of meeting in order to progress in the determination of the specifications. We are progressing well for the mechanical part, for the pneumatic part. There, has, there is still some work to be done about uh, the, the electrical and uh, um, digital part, but still we are confident that we will have something in the next package uh, in the form of a technical specification that will probably be referenced in one of the TSIs, the TSI wagon, certainly, and maybe some elements for the transition from the current situation to the future situation where most of the wagons will be equipped with the DAC. So this is a very important work that we are carrying out in close relation with, with shift to rail uh, and it's progressing well but there will be no elements available for the consultation that will start on the 18th of March. It's too early, we don't have a technical specification available. Another important aspect is the assessment of the composite brake blocks uh, at the constituent level. So this uh, this point is about the closure of an open point that was introduced recently in the noise TSI. And it's also a way to, to make these interoperability constituents that are the composite brake block a little bit more normal, I would say, because uh, composite brake blocks have a long history behind them and they are a bit special uh, constituents in the sense that they are not always authorized with an area of use covering all the EU. So this, um, this open point will be closed thanks to a methodology for the assessment of the composite break block. So there is a meeting today, actually, so the, today is the last meeting of the group on composite break block and they should decide if they will also include the pass-fail criteria or not or if they will only include the methodology. So another important aspect is this one, the inclusion of the, the composite break block, the assessment methodology for the composite break block. The third important aspect relative to wagons is the inclusion of the derailment detection device. So this was a long lasting request from, uh, from, from the commission that we have uh, completed. So the, the specifications for the derailment detection device will be included in the TSI wagon and will be available uh, in the documents we will uh, submit for the consultation. 
both in TSI Wagon and TSI Lock and Pass. And we have developed three functions. Uh, the specifications are more functional. There's derailment prevention function, derailment detection function, and derailment detection and actuation function. So all this will be described in the, in the revised TSI and already available for the consultation. Next slide, please. So next um, topic uh, about uh, freight. Uh, freight is not only wagon, it's also, as mentioned by Olivier, combined transport. And with our new organization by topic, we could set up a specific working group dealing with all aspects of combined transport that will make proposal affecting several TSIs. So the most of the part of the discussions for combined transport have been about codification. So you, there is a system of codification for, uh, for combined transport where the, the lines are codified, the wagons are codified, the intermodal loading units that are the containers or the semi-trailers are codified and by a combination of these three codifications it is possible to determine the possibility or to carry uh, an intermodal loading unit on a certain line with a certain wagon under certain conditions, exceptional or not exceptional transport. So this codification system uh, will be described in a specific document and it will be something new for us because this uh, document will be a guidance. So it will be somehow a transversal guidance. At the moment, we have one application guide for one TSI. Here, for the first time, we will, be, we will have one application guide applying to several TSIs. So what is already uh, in the pipeline and probably will be also part of the consultation. It's in the wagon TSI, some requirements about the devices for securing the intermodal loading unit. So this, uh, these devices will need to be, uh, to be assessed before the authorization of the wagon. There will be also in the wagon TSI some requirements about the codification of the wagons. Uh, there will be in the infrastructure TSI also some um, references to the codification of the lines and the methodology will be defined in the guidance and there will be also in the register of infrastructure some uh, requirements, additional requirements, there are already requirements for the codification of the sections of lines, there will be additional requirements covering the complete uh, network and for all types of intermodal loading units. So all this will be part of the consultation in, uh, in uh, March. Now the topical working group is focusing on the operational aspects related to the uh, combined transport. So there are several uh, operational aspects. First of all is how to codify a line, when to codify a line. Uh, second operational aspect is um, how to perform the compatibility check between the loaded wagon on one side and the line on the other side. Another aspect is also the categorization of uh, combined transport. Is it always exceptional transport? Are there conditions that could make combined transport a subcategory of exceptional transport? So all these discussions in the operation relative to operation are, are still ongoing in the, within the group. And so they will not form part of the consultation. Another aspect that I have not mentioned because it's in the hands of another working party, it's all the exchange of data between the actors of combined transport. And this is managed by our colleague of the TAF TSI. And I think the, and their recommendation has been issued already for that. Next slide. So with our new organization, as uh, explained by Olivier, we have uh, decided to set up several groups specifically dealing with interfaces. Um, in fact, with our previous approach where we had one working party for one TSI, we had a bit a silo approach. And now we have broken this silo approach and we have a, more an interface approach. And this was quite interesting because uh, it demonstrated that there was some need for um, to consider these uh, the TSIs from the interface perspective. So we have set up several working groups 
uh, one working group about interfaces between fixed installation and rolling stock with uh, two task force between infrastructure and rolling stock and another one between energy and rolling stock. And we have another topical working group to an architecture, which is also dealing with a lot with interfaces between uh, fixed installation and rolling stock, uh, between, sorry, um, CCS and rolling stock. So those groups have been working and have proposed quite a certain number of modifications in TSI's infrastructure, TSI energy, TSI uh, lock and pass, wagon, OPE, uh, and also uh, CCS and the subset 34 of CCS. So this will be uh, this will be a part of the of the consultation. There are several uh, specific um, changes that we can mention, like uh, the interfaces between the pantograph and the catenary, in particular about the, the current at, at standstill. Uh, it's something that is, is um, currently in discussion in relation, for example, with the, 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 the battery charging, the charging of traction batteries. So this is a topic which is quite uh, quite interesting. Um, in the group about infrastructure and lock and pass, they have been discussing about the, the, the requirements on the, the, the infrastructure, the categorization on the line and the type of uh, rolling stock according to the categorization of the line. Uh, the, from the point of view of loading capacity. And there's also another aspect that is under discussion and that will not be uh, included in the consultation. It's the conditions for upgrade and renewal of fixed installations. So this is uh, another topic uh, which we, for which the discussions are still ongoing. Uh, another group dealing with interfaces between the CCS and rolling stock. So in this group, they have reviewed completely the interfaces between the two subsystems and will propose significant changes in the lock and pass TSI, in particular with regard to references to the subset 34 of the CCS TSI. And this group has also worked on the interfaces between the ATO part of the CCS uh, subsystem and the uh, rolling stock uh, sub subsystem. But this second part also is under is still under discussion and will not be part of the consultation. So all these groups focusing on interfaces have brought a lot of changes on uh, in all those TSIs, which may not seem very significant, but they are quite important and they are bringing really consistency in the set of TSIs. Next one. Um, alors, another topic for which we put a lot of efforts uh, with the help of, of sector organization is uh, standards. In the TSIs about lock and pa uh, rolling stock and fixed installations, we have uh, 162 standards that are referenced. And we realize that for more than 80% of them, the reference we made was outdated. So the, the reason for that is, uh, is probably that we have not made any uh, exhaustive review of standards since the previous big revision we made in 2014. So since 2014, we have not made the exercise to analyze all those standards published and to update the references. So that's why we have this heavy backlog. So we are reviewing now approximately 133 standards in order to uh, assess whether they can be directly referenced in the TSI or if the reference to the new standard would impact the TSI, the TSI text, which can be the case sometime, or if the reference to the new standard is not accepted for whatever reason. So we are we have a strong support from uh, from the sector who was organized uh, within the sector forum rail a number of working groups to to analyze the evolution of all these standards at the moment i think we have checked 30 references uh, we have at the next working party meeting which will be in march we have another 50 references approximately that we should be able to update and for the 80 remaining or 
70 remaining. This will continue until um, until the recommendation in June and maybe even beyond because um, we can have our plan is to have a working group on standards remaining active after the TSI revision in order to progressively as soon as the standard is published to progressively analyze if the new version of the standard can be coded in the TSI or not. So we should not have such a backlog in the future. And this is also made possible by the new organization working in a topical working group. So this topical working group on standards will, uh, will remain active. Um, next slide. So another important topic that we have um, for which we have uh, modified the TSI is about the transition. So we propose for all rolling stock uh, related TSI a new transition regime. Um, and this new regime uh, probably will have a significant impact on all the rolling stock projects in the future. So this new transition regime is based first on uh, categorization of the TSI changes. So from this revision, all the TSI changes will be categorized. So the categorization is not very difficult. It relates to the change itself. So for each time we make a change to the TSI, we have to ask ourselves the question, does the conformity to the previous TSI always lead to conformity to the new TSI? Can be the case, for example, when uh, the change is just editorial, or if the change is opening possibilities for alternatives, like for example, we have a, a proposal to, in addition to physical tests, to permit the use of simulations to demonstrate the uh, conformity with the evacuation requirement in the lock and pass TSI. So in that case, when we open the possibility to new alternatives, the conformity with the previous TSI leads to conformity to the new TSI. So in that case, we say there is no transition because if you are compliant to TSI N, automatically you are compliant to TSI N plus one. So this is the first question. Then we have, in case the answer is no, in case TSI, the compli compliance with the previous TSI does not lead to the compliance with the new TSI, then there is another question. In the, this question is, is the change related to um, a safety or a technical compatibility issue, or is it related to a policy objective? So this is the second question. When this, the answer to this question is no, the change is not related to any of those, then the change is categorized with a generic transition regime. And I will explain what the generic transition regime is. And if the answer to this second question is yes, so yes, the change is relative to a safety issue or it's relative to a policy objective, then the change will be of the third category and it will need to be defined precisely what are the transition, what is the transition regime for that change. I will take an example that we uh, that we that I presented already, which is the digital automatic coupling. We know that the digital automatic coupling is part of a policy objective. There is a strong objective to implement the digital automatic coupling. So it will be a change of the third category with a specific transition regime. This transition regime will have the objective to implement uh, quickly, uh, more quickly, the digital automatic coupling. So it means that the TSI change will be um, with a specific transition regime and will apply to wagons in production and also to existing wagons. So these are the three categories. And next slide. And the three categories permit to have a new, a new transition regime, which is depicted here. So compared to the current regime with phase A, phase B, we still have two phases that we have called design phase, production phase. A change is that these phases are not limited in time. That's a big change. At the moment, phase A, phase B are seven years 
for uh, lock and pass and uh, four plus ten in wagon, they are no longer limited in time. The phase design phase starts like the phase A with the appointment of the notified body and ends with the uh, certification, with the time certificate or design examination certificate. And if there are TSI entering into force during the design phase, the changes will not apply to ongoing projects during seven years for the generic transition or during a certain number of years for changes with a specific transition. Meaning that at the time of the certification, the notified body will declare conformity with the TSIs in force at that time and not with the TSIs in force at the beginning, like it, were, like it is currently the case, but with a clear TSIs in force at that time. So that's a, a significant change. Uh, and then once the type is certified, the production can continue with no limit. There is no longer this seven or ten years limit uh, in the production time. So this is a very important change and certainly we will have opportunities to, to communicate further on that. Uh, it is described in the document that will be uh, open to consultation on the 18th of March. So I'd like to make a short conclusion. I mentioned, I think, several times during this presentation, the role of um, of um, of groups uh, of sector groups uh, so i would say that we have done a lot of work in two years huh? uh, and this work would, wouldn't have been possible without uh, the commitment of uh, of stakeholders so um, i would like to thank all the stakeholders for this commitment because they provided a lot of very good input that enabled us to provide this and to propose this uh, this tsi changes now after two years Thank you very much. Many thanks, Antoine. I'd like now to hear Voter Malfet, Project Officer, ERTMS and Telematics Unit at ERA. He will describe two other concrete outputs related to ERTMS. Please, Voter. Thank you, Cyril. Next slide. So I will try to give you a picture of what is in the scope of the CCS TSI linked to what we call the digital and green rail. So first of all, in the ERTMS set of specifications, we will introduce a new third part. So today we have ETCS being the automatic train protection. We have GSMR for the radio and now we will add automatic train operation as a third part. Why? First of all, we want to avoid that in 20 years time we see that there are 25 different class B ATO systems being deployed on ETCS lines. So we really want from the beginning a harmonized ATO deployment across Europe, which is important for the operators. And to be clear, this is the one of the flagships of the TSI CCS 2022 package. It's already ongoing during the last years where ATO specifications have been further developed and tested by shift to rail and where in the era, in our era EECT, we have reviewed mainly on a monthly basis the specifications. A second flagship for the TSI CCS 2022 is the FRMCS introduction. So GSMR will gradually become obsolete. So we estimate this obsolescence between 2035, 2040. So we have to prepare for a new radio system. It will be based on 5G technology. First of all, the very important good news is that there is already spectrum reserved for this FRMCS 5G technology for railways. Now we are working heavily with the sector on the specifications. The priority for the CCSTSI 2022 is that at least the interfaces for the applications, ETCS, ATO, or the key management system and the voice are standardized so that we can already prepare these ETCS, ATO applications to be ready for the FRMCS introduction. The full detailed set of FRMCS specifications will be introduced when ready by a technical opinion 
or in the next CCS TSI revision. A third element for the CCS TSI technical specifications, we have today already ETCS level two and level three, where for example in Denmark or Norway, you implement it without overlay of class B on track site, without line site signaling. Well, the ERTMS users group, they have developed uh, a concept to further, let's say, digitalize the ETCS part. It's called hybrid train detection or ETCS level three hybrid, and it allows to further increase capacity based on virtual sections or even to reduce uh, the number of train detection systems uh, between lines. This will create shorter headways and or a significant cost reduction for trackside deployment. In addition to this concept, we also work on a concept for supervised maneuvers, which is being developed and which will allow a safety for the supervised shunting and also will digitalize, let's say, the now physical shunting signals, making them virtual. And we can call this the, that we prepare also here ETCS for digital automatic couplers, because if all trains have this digital automatic coupling, then we can get rid of shunting signals. Then we have another set of enhancements. Uh, in my opinion, the big success of ERTMS is linked to the continuous return of experience within the different member states. And we receive change requests always to optimize them. Our role in EECT is to let's say filter those not to create more complexity, but to embed the optimizations that are really helping the system to be further optimized. So we are discussing, for example, a braking curve optimization, which is helpful for the train diver to, to get closer to the real targets. We discuss some safety and cybersecurity aspects. For example, we have uh, a change request linked to the attack from unlinked balises, which was reported even from a member state outside Europe by an Israeli company. Then we have further change requests which further optimize the costs. For example, in Spain, where there are three rail tracks, uh, there is a change request to reduce the number of balises to be installed on these three rail tracks. And we work on a potential enhancements for ETCS level one limited supervision implementations. So these are all let's say change requests that are processed within our ERA EECT group to have, let's say, almost an optimized system, which let's say is the continuous, uh, takes into account the continuous experience from projects. As Antoine already said, we work on interfaces for our part, sometimes it's questions, why should it be in the legal framework, this onboard modularity? It's clearly stated in the first article one of the interoperability directive that it's, we have to define an optimal level of harmonization in order to contribute to the progressive achievement of the internal market. And here we set an important step for the CCS TSI 2022, where we will define elements that we will base the applications and connect them to an Ethernet platform in which the different new parts, for example, ATO or the new radio communication system shall all be connected to this same Ethernet based platform. Why? Because today we have different platforms and it complexifies the integration of the different parts from different suppliers. It also allows to decouple the life cycle of the different parts, especially we want to decouple the safety part ETCS from the non safety part, for example, ATO. And as such, we can smoothly allow maybe upgrades later for the ATO without touching anymore the ETCS safety parts. And this is an important step that we further achieve in this CCS TSI 2022. Next. 
Then the third element in the specifications and the technical specifications remain in the ERTMS specifications. We see also that we have potential gaps that are reported or that there is a potential different interpretation of the current specifications, which we always correct and where we define mitigation measures if they would occur. Today, let's be clear, we consider that most of these error corrections in the specifications do not really occur in projects. This is the feedback we get from stakeholders and also at ERA, uh, we do not receive many requests to apply what we call Article 30. That is where the, the member states can ask ERA to intervene if there are specific compatibility issues detected. But of course, we continue to correct potential gaps or ambigu ambiguities in the specifications in order that they are not pro propagated in new projects and to help suppliers and implementers uh, to have fully compliant products. This is the part on the technical specifications. Like Antoine, I want to really thank all the stakeholders that contributed to these technical specifications because let's say in this virtual environment, uh, having sometimes complex technical discussions requires a lot of discipline. So again, thanks to all. Many, <clears throat> many thanks, Walter. It's <clears throat> now time to conclude, sorry. Let me now give the floor to Josef Topolbauer, the executive director of the agency. Please, Josef. Many thanks, uh, Cyril, and good afternoon to all our participants. Uh, during this webinar, we have uh, given you detailed insight into the digital rail and green freight TSI 22 package and how this package relates to the EU policy objectives. This TSI revision package is an important step to support the sustainable and smart mobility strategy, aiming at making the European transport system more sustainable, more modern and more digital. We have uh, presented to you that uh, the package contributes to improved management of system change, to interoperability in space and time, and of course it will introduce new functionality. I would like to come to some conclusions from the preparation work of this package. And as you have heard from uh, Jo, uh, Olivier, Antoine and Walter, we have had some important changes how we worked, uh, not only because of the pandemic, but uh, also because we tackled the entire package of TSI changes at uh, one time. So even during this pandemic crisis, the new working method that we have introduced could be considered as a big success. The agency was able to comply with the tight deadlines. We could increase the number of experts involved. We also broke the silos between the different working groups. We assured better transparency for all the actors involved. And this was a consequence of the pandemic, we could reduce the cost of participation as all the working groups were organized online. The other objective that could be achieved was to improve the interfaces between the TSIs and to clarify and simplify their application. Uh, Antoine has explained how we consider migration and how we introduce a new more streamlined transition regime. However, after the end of 2022, the work on the TSIs will not be over. We will keep the working party on TSI active, even in slow motion, and we will continue to create topical working groups when needed in order to address the future topics that will arise, such as fuel cells, or battery propelled trains, the development of virtual testing, the digital automatic coupling that was already mentioned, ATO level three and four, or 
any other subject resulting from the activities of Europe's rail joint undertaking. Just to conclude with a summary of uh, our, our time plan, the consultation on the draft recommendations will start on the 18th of March for a three month period. And of course, all the documents are accessible on ARA's website. The final recommendation will then be produced by the end of June, uh, leading to the vote in the risk committee and in turn to the entry into force. I hope that uh, with today's webinar, we have given you some visibility into the content and the planning of this important uh, TSI package. I thank you very much for your attention and I hand back uh, to Cyril for the closing of this event. Cyril, please. Many thanks, Joseph. Um, we are now reaching the end of this webinar. I first want to apologize to my colleague, Walter Meilfeld, because of time constraint, we had to skip one of the two concrete outputs he intended to describe. Uh, but I want to um, stress the fact that we are going to um, put on the website, on the ERA website, the full presentation of this webinar. So all the persons that are interested in these outputs will be uh, able to find the whole presentations the whole presentation on the website. Many thanks to all of you, to all of our speakers and the colleagues involved in the preparation of this event. Thank you for your attendance. You were a lot today to listen to us and your participation, dear attendees. Before you go, we would be very happy to receive your feedback on this webinar. If you had the link provided on the webinar webpage on the ERA website or via the QR code you're seeing right now on the screen and that you can flash with your smartphone. We look forward to meeting you again at our upcoming webinar on the 17th of March. It will be a very special event designed to announce the important ERTMS conference that will take place in, a <clears throat> in April. In the meantime, if you would like to stay updated on our activities, please sign, sign into our database by selecting the button login on our website, website page. Thank you very much for participating. We wish you a very pleasant afternoon. Take care.